Welcome back. It's still Plus Sports Special, the fans edition. And now we're headed into the English Premier League Special. We'll be looking at the fans' reaction on how the club sides have performed so far this season. And of course, you have the opportunity to call in to also air your view. You give me your name and tell me what football club you support. And let me know what you have to say concerning your club and how they've performed so far this season. Remember, the number to call is 0906-0005719. And I have my Zoom guests on standby. Well, um, I thought we were going to have the Liverpool fan, but he's not on at the moment. Maybe he's still celebrating uh, their victory, talking about them winning the English Premier League after waiting for as much as 30 years to get to lay their hands on that trophy. Well, I've got Damilola Odubumi. He is a Manchester United fan um, all the way. Of course, he's in Lagos here, Lagos, Nigeria. There's GD Ladipo, the Arsenal fan. He's in the UK. And there's Emmanuel Anthony, a Manchester United fan, also in the UK. And there's Ebipoba Murowe, who is all the way in uh, Ro um, Oman. He is a Chelsea fan. Once again, good morning and uh, good to have you guys on me with me. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, guys. Uh, uh, all right, let me start off with um, the Manchester City fan, talking about uh, Daminola Odubumi. Uh, I'd like to have your opinion. Can you give us a, a brief analysis on how your season has gone so far? Well, considering we set for standards we set for ourselves this past few seasons, this season has been so par, you know. We've had we've scored ninety seven goals. Mm. Same is just standards of the book. Let's in more and we've lost combined ten games. That's more than we've lost in the last past two seasons combined together. Mm. We 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 have our problems definitely. Mm. We just have to, you know, take our defense and mount another challenge next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this season has been disappointing. Yeah, you talk about the problems of the club, but it doesn't look like Manchester City had any problem when the season started because it felt like they were going to roll over and get to win the season. But was it, was it, was it a case of them underrating the Reds, talking about the champions, Liverpool? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. A bit of complacency. Mm. All right. You need to pass back to the league, so look that way. Of course, going to, going to um, Chelsea now, I mean, this is, we're going to be seeing the last fixtures of the English Premier League this weekend. I'm talking about uh, Ebi Pogba Murowe now all the way in uh, Oman. Now, Chelsea will be taking on uh, a strong opponent this weekend, talking about Wolverhampton Wanderers. What are your expectations from this game? Are you expecting a victory to help Chelsea secure Champions League football? Um, thanks, Udoka. You can act, you can actually call me a bix so as to um, <laughs> not to make you uh, twist your tongue as you, you try <laughs> <Okay>. to. <do. laughs> so um, yeah, really, I expect um, Chelsea to go all out and uh, to get the, the the necessary points because um, even though a draw will just will just be enough for them, but I'll um, I'll see them uh, going there. It's a tricky match, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, Wolves is not is not a team you will run over with um, strikers like um, Adama and then Jimenez. Um, uh, these are these are top top rated uh, strikers, and the, the the bad thing for Chelsea is our defense is is below par, if you ask me. Mm. But um, we have just uh, been trying to, um, and I know that um, Frank Lampard he also um, acknowledges the fact that um, there's work to be done um, in the. Uh, in the defense. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, now, before we go on, I'd like to take a quick break. Uh, so I show you what your managers have said, talking about the likes of uh, Frank Lampard and, uh, of course, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Brenda Rogers, the coach of Manchester, uh, Leicester City. Because Leicester City will be taking on Manchester United. They're all fighting for a place of, for the Champions League. There's also Chelsea fighting to qualify for the Champions League. Let's listen to these managers. And when we'll come back, we'll continue with the fans. forward to the game. We have given ourselves a good chance of being in the Champions League next year. We, we want to go there and dominate the game. We want to go. We wanted to get to this position to be able to go to Leicester and having to beat them. And we're not going to change our uh, approach. We, we want to go there and try and win the game. Now we are actually arriving to the, the last game of the season. You know, playing against Manchester United, one of the superpowers in world football, with a chance of of going above them to uh, to make it into the Champions League. So for me, 
the players have been have had a really really good season. European football being our being our goal. No, we'll, we'll approach the game to to win the game. I don't think there's any way other way to approach a game of football. I can't walk away. I hope from the fact that. Um, the goal was to get in the top four. The goal was also to improve this squad and try and develop and, uh, and be as good as we can be. And now we have the opportunity for top four, so it's a huge game, no doubt. I mean, the race for the top four is tough. And uh, for Manchester United, the need to defeat Leicester City to stand any chance of qualifying for the Champions League. And for Chelsea, they need to get a victory or a draw against Wolverhampton Wanderers to stand a chance of also qualifying for the Champions League. For Arsenal, well, they have to battle um, Chelsea. And if they get to win the FA Cup, they stand a chance, of course, qualifying for not the Champions League now, the Europa League. And uh, for Arsenal fans, this is not where they want to be. But of course, they will take what they see at the moment. If, and and that's where they can actually play until they get to qualify for the Champions League. And for Tottenham, uh, Liverpool, Liverpool are champions of England. And of course, I have the fans right here talking to me on the show. I have a Manchester City fan, a United fan, there's an Arsenal fan, and also a Chelsea fan right here. But of course, you can join in the conversation by calling in and letting us know uh, how your club has fared this season. Tell us your name and the club you support. The number to call again is 0906 000 5719. Again, 0906. 0005719. Let me talk to Emmanuel, the Manchester United fan. I mean, what are expectations against Leicester City? Because Leicester City, since the project restart, it seems like they've been fumbling with the results, but they need to get a result against Manchester United to qualify for the Champions League. Do you think that your club has what it takes to defeat Leicester? Yeah, I think if you look at Manchester United's past nine or ten results, you'll see that we actually haven't lost against Leicester City. They gave us a good run for our money mm. in the early parts of, this, of the season when they faced us at Old Trafford. Mm. And we narrowly won by a Rashford penalty. And he also had a phenomenal free kick, which rattled the crossbar. But also, I, I took some time out just to ponder on what Man United can actually do against Leicester City mm. in, in, in tomorrow's game. And um, funny enough, I stumbled upon Johnny Evans, who had an interview on the Manchester United website and with some of the old school Manchester United legends. And he himself already shared the expectation, which is that Leicester's aim is just to get into European football. Mm. Unfortunately for me, I'll say that as a defeatist mentality and they're happy to settle for just playing in Europe. Brendan Rodgers has tried to take the pressure off them. And as he likely said, the pressure is on Manchester United because we are usually deemed to be in the team in the top four. So hopefully we can accomplish that tomorrow. We're not going there for a draw. We're going there for a win. And hopefully okay. we can get a convincing two to three one win with Greenwood scoring on the score sheet as well. Oh, already so making already making predictions. But looking at the pairing of um, Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba, would you say this is the perfect pairing for Manchester United? Because there's still rumours that Pogba might leave at the end of the season. Yeah, there's rumours that Pogba might leave and, and rumours are always going to be rumours. I think one of the things Man United are always going to try and push through, Pogba will be staying at Manchester United for the next um, 12 months. Um, so they're going to activate his release clause, hopefully. There's also rumours that he might um, extend his stay. But I know that a lot of this is banking on Champions League football. This is a cent, £70 million war chest of money and we can't afford to miss out on that. But the Pogba and Bruno Fernandes combination is great. But I wish Wolfram and Diddy was on the opposite team because he will complement those two players completely and we can actually get rid of the old school Matic. But um, so far, um, I believe those two are going well, but we still need more depth in our squad and hopefully we can get that during the summer transfer window. Oh. All right. Uh, number to call in is 0906 Now let me talk to Gide Ladipo, the Arsenal fan in the house. I mean, um, what would you say... Um, just give me your brief opinion about Arsenal, how the season has gone so far, and your expectations for Arsenal, because they will be playing against Chelsea on the 1st of August, hoping to win the FA Cup to stand a chance of qualifying for the Europa League. Well, I think as an Arsenal fan, you know, since the days of the, the latter years of Arsenal Wenger, you tend to manage your expectations and not expect to be too much. Um, everyone knows that the club has been very slow to invest in football players. Um, over the last five, ten years, and it's kind of gotten worse, um, you know, towards the latter end of Wenger's reign. Um, you know, we don't really have anything to lose going into the last game of the season, playing against Watford. Um, they need it more than we do. We're not going to qualify, you know, through the rankings on the league table for any kind of European tournament. Um, 
I guess what we're looking forward to is that August the 1st um, FA Cup final. Um, it would be a really good bet they give for me if Arsenal could win because, you know, the next day is my birthday. So, um, <laughs> really just looking forward to Arsenal just doing something wonderful, winning the FA Cup, um, the first trophy for Mikel Arteta as, as a head coach of Arsenal. That would be brilliant, you know. Okay, of course, all Arsenal fans, it just seems like uh, there's always an important man to, pl to play before a fan's birthday. But I'm sure the Chelsea fan has a lot to say. Bix, what do you think about this? Arsenal fans hopeful of getting a victory against Chelsea, uh, talking about the FA Cup, but I'm sure you disagree with this. Uh, yes, I really do disagree. But um, <laughs> to my brother, uh, JD, I, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could uh, speak to um, Lampard to just hand you over the cup. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this, this would not be because um, I, I see Chelsea um, uh, winning that, that, uh, that match. I see how it's going to play out already. Um, because uh, from what I see, Chelsea... They already now know wh where their the problems are. I'm sure they all they, they know all this while, but against Arsenal, against Arsenal, I don't see them. London is blue, man. London is blue. So. <laughs> London is blue. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what part of London you're talking about. <laughs> the whole of London is blue, blue. right now. Right. <laughs> but yeah, let, let, let's talk about uh, a big, Let's talk about Manchester City. I like to throw a bit of controversy. I like to cause chaos when it comes to arguing football. Now, let's talk about Manchester City. They escaped the the Euro, UEFA Champions League ban, but they'll still be mm. paying a fine. I mean, if you if you didn't commit any offence. Why did you still get to pay a fine? I mean, what's your take on the whole decision from Cass? Well, um, I, I think it's, um, it's probably pressure from, from the powers that be mm. that's making them take more of these um, drastic decisions. Um, I realized that many people were saying if, um, if they actually committed, then they should be, be banned. Mm -hmm. Well, because they have lifted the ban, they also wanted to to more or less show them their might. And so they had to make them pay something. But again, it's all um, football politics, if you ask me. Um, and the, these things happen out there. And uh, we, as fans, we, we rarely know exactly the intricacies that goes behind the, uh, the, the scene. Mm. All right. Of course, uh, uh, Damilola, yeah, you're a Manchester City fan, and I'm sure you're very happy that um, City will be playing the Champions League next season. But what would be your reaction to what Abix has said? Um, things that there's a general misconception about the fine. Uh. Yeah, the fine wasn't for the ban or anything. It's for not cooperating with UEFA in the initial in the initial investigation. That's what the fine is for. But it's been thrown out there that, oh, that since we are guilty, since we're not guilty, why are we paying a fine? Mm. A lot of people don't understand. The fine is not for what we did or what we didn't do. The fine is for not, not um, cooperating with UEFA during the investigation. So that would, that, would, that would the fine is for. I just want to make that clear. Mm. All right. Now, look at that. <coughs> Manchester City. What kind of players do you think? Okay, GD doesn't agree. Um, Emmanuel doesn't agree. Please, you guys. Emmanuel, let me have your say. <laughs> There's, there's a saying that if somebody comes to knock on your door and your house isn't ready, your duty is to keep them outside up until you get the house ready. Okay. And um, I think Man City also employed a very similar tactic in order to try and get their paperwork ready. And as my wonderful uncle loves to say, he was a massive politician in Nigeria, but I'll keep that quiet for now. There is no riches without crime. So unfortunately, I think Manchester City, with the wonderful oil money and Arab money that they do possess in <laughs> abundance, they're very, very good and making sure that they can be in that Champions League level. And some of the people at CAS can be paid handsomely in order for getting them a little slap on the wrist so that they can play. On a footballing side, I'm a massive fan of Pep Guardiola. And I, and I actually wanted to see them play in the Champions League anyway, as a footballing side, even though they are my noisy neighbours and my arch enemies in Manchester. But nonetheless, I believe we need to call a spade a spade and actually say that what Manchester City did was absolutely wrong, flawed, and they should have been punished for that. Very true, because Jose Mourinho also came out to slam them and said, come on, it, it, this is totally wrong, and the decision from Cass is totally um, faulty as well. But City fans are happy that they'll be playing the Champions League next season. But let me ask you um, the question, what if? What if they got that ban from Cass, the dummy? What if they got that ban from Cass? Do you think there'll be a mass exodus from the club, Manchester City? 
No, yeah. definitely not. Definitely not. Because the players are under contract, so most of them are actually loyal to the club and the badge. Kevin De Bruyne is definitely going to stay on. The I'm telling, they all said they're going to stay on before, if or not, if or not we were, we were vindicated or not. So when we, they were going to stay, no, no Max also does. Probably the the people that will have left were the normal people that we always knew were going to leave, like David Silva, yeah. um, maybe Fernandinho. John Stone didn't just balance the books because, to be honest, we need to balance the books of that guy. Uh-huh. True. So, no, no, no matter what else. Fair enough, we already have commitment from, from players to join us. Matter how you see it, we are here to stay. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, Dami, let's talk about um, Arsenal. Mikel Arteta used to be an assistant to Pep Guardiola. Would you say he has done, he has done fine since he left um, the side of Pep Guardiola? Because for now, he feels like Pep Guardiola doesn't really respect um, the club Arsenal. Uh, Mikel Arteta has done fine at Arsenal, you know, being, you know, coming in the middle of the season, middle of the crisis, you know. If you watch Arsenal play now, they are more organised with the way they play. Like, for example, the game against Liverpool and um, Manchester City. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen an Arsenal game in the last three or four years when they've been organised in defence, you know. They didn't panic, make errors, and they were actually able to capitalise on the errors of their opponents. Mm. That, was, that was really impressive for Mikel Arteta. Mm. He got his static spot on that day. He would do well with, with the right-back in market and all. Mm. He would do well with that squad. Um, of course, uh, Jide, uh, do you agree with this? Because if you ask me um, as an analyst, as an anchor, I would say Arsenal needs a lot of overhauling from the defenders to um, all the players. We need You guys need players who are hungry to play football. But if you're going to do that, how would you get these quality players? Because your manager, Mikel Arteta, has said that when it comes to the transfer window, he needs to be extra careful to get in the quality players that he needs and, of course, hungry players. But if you don't qualify for the Europa League, don't you think that would be a disaster for Arsenal? Well, I mean, it will be a disaster. But at the end of the day, I think it's just a face that we need to ride out. Um, there will still be football players that will be attracted to, to Arsenal Football Club, regardless of whether we qualify or not. Because we all know the potential is there. You know, the very minute Mikel Arteta was signed as coach, you know, other clubs started to take notice that, you know, this is a, a slip. Arsenal is a sleeping giant. And I'm not saying this as an Arsenal because I'm not, I'm not trying to you know, patronize the football club. It is a, a sleeping giant. I would like to remind you guys, because I actually still have my stuff here, right? <laughs> you can see this, right? <laughs> the Invisibles, okay. right? We are the only football club in the whole of England. I, I mean, apart from, from Preston in um, like 18th century or something, you know, that's mm -hmm. never lost a, a match in a, in a whole season. So we are a sleeping giant. I just think the problem that Arsenal has at the moment is... You can just go to the league table. I mean, we've scored... How many goals have we scored this season? We've scored um, 40, um, 40... 53 <coughs> goals and conceded 46. Yeah. So we're scoring... Um, we're conceding as many goals as we're scoring. You yeah. know? So if we can kind of fix those loopholes, you know, get the defence um, up and running, you know, how we used to be in the days of Tony Adams and Steve Bold, you know, when Arsenal was known to have, like, greasy defenders and concede less goals, I think we're, we're able to compete you know, with the top four like we used to um, mm. during the Wenger year. So I, I personally think that there's a lot of potential um, for, for Arsenal yeah. to progress over the next two years. But again, you know, I don't have the bragging rights right now. My team is sitting in the middle of yeah. the table. It's an unfamiliar terrain. It's something that we're not used to. And all the other clubs have the right to say, what they want to say at the moment about Arsenal because we're not performing <laughs> to the level that we're performing. So yeah, true. Mm -hmm. I will analyze it uh, as a as a football analyst and also as a fan as well. So yeah, just have to balance things up. We do, we're we're gonna be we're gonna get better over the next couple of years. Mark my words. How many years? Right? How many years? Mm. Okay. In the next couple of years, give us two seasons. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, I, I have a call. I have two, a caller. Two. Yeah, by show. 2022. Right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Two there's seasons. a caller on the show. I have Jerry. He's a Manchester United fan. Let's hear. Let's hear him, and I'll get back to you guys. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Good morning. Morning. How's it going? Uh, it's fine. How's everything? Yeah. Uh, very well. So let's talk, uh, Jerry. Best from Joss. Um, what's your yes. take, Manchester United's performance so far this season? As a fan, what's your reaction? <clears throat> well, as as a United fan, obviously I have to be disappointed hmm. with. With what has happened, there has been progress. 
But I think so far, the whole season, it's disappointing to see the kind of points we have dropped oh. over the course of the season. Sometimes you just see a very lackadaisical attitude from the players. Sometimes, like, the coach is, you know, like, scared or timid. It's, it's hard to say. It has been just ups and downs, mostly with, with Ole, Ole Gunnar oh. It's It's hard to... I don't know how I feel about him, to be honest, because there have been good times. Bruno arrived in January. It was like, yeah, a whole revolution. And after some time, it was washed. And you can see you have United United fans saying, yeah, we don't need Pogba again. Bruno has come to save us. And that's, and that's what separates us from the top of the top. Look at Liverpool. Look at Masti. You see insane squad depth. And yes, they're still trying to improve on their scores. That's what... That's what matters now. You need you need to have good players and good backup players. Mm. You see City with the likes of Aguero, Jesus, Silva, Bernardo and David, who's retiring now. You have Mares, you have Sane, who just left. You have Foden, you know, you have players. Mm. But you look at United, if it matches Martial, Rashford, Bruno, Pogba, I can't call any... In fact, as far as I'm concerned, Pogba is the only world-class player in United. Oh, wow. And then you have... And then you have the meaning, and people are saying, yeah, we're, we're fine. So it's been quite frustrating, to be honest. Mm, frustrating. Now, looking forward to next season, what are your expectations mm -hmm. from the club? Well, I think the transfer window will basically determine how next season will go. Because if you go in with this squad again, to be honest, we will not win anything. <laughs> um, the J.D. Sancho saga has been going on for too long. It needs to come to an end. We need to sign it. That's the truth. I think we need a left back, a centre back. I think the De Henderson needs to replace David Dea because mm. it looks like I don't know what's wrong. With it. it looks like it's worse now. Mm. Yeah, we need this striker too because Martial doesn't have any. There's no pressure on his shoulders, so I think we need that. All right. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Jerry Best, for speaking with me this morning, the Manchester United fan. Of course. Thank you very much. For All right. Me. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Now, um, Emmanuel, you heard the, the caller, Jerry Bessie, said that Dean Henderson needs to replace the goalkeeper right there at Manchester United. Of course, the Gea should be classified as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. But do you think he doesn't have competition enough um, for him to stay focused with the club? No, I fully disagree with that. As I said, uh, again, being a coach myself for 13 plus years, um, what David De Gea has done has been unprecedented and is... And, and it's a massive dip in form on his part. Mm. Um, the mistakes, the catalogue of mistakes, not only in this season, which I probably count about four, um, the, the two that he made to the back end of last season, the one against Chelsea, and um, which was a massive one, and that was winning the game, and I don't know how the heck he made such mistakes. Mm -hmm. we, we could see that. But another thing we need to understand is that at Manchester United is a very different animal from Sheffield United. If I was the Manchester United hierarchy, I'll make sure that Dane Henderson goes out on another loan for at least another year yeah. so we can actually see that this is not a fluke and this is the real deal because it's not about what you do in one year. You see, David De Gea has been at Man United for a decade. Mm. We need to respect somebody of that ilk. And he's also been our best player on, on play of the season for about five times in a row, I believe. So we need to be aware of understanding that time needs to be shared. And I think next season we'll know properly if this is a permanent kind of dip in David De Gea or this is something he can get over. We've also got the best um, goalkeeping partnership in him and Romero, and I don't think any other Premier League team has that quality of partnerships mm -hmm. if you took, put away David De Gea's errors as a side. So what I'll do, I'll put Dean Henderson to continue to get that Premier League experience for another year because he's only had it for 12 months, and anyone could have a good 12 months. Anybody. And as they had a good 12 months, we've seen some Arsenal, Chelsea players, Man City players have a good 12 months, and the, the next season, they, they come off different. So I believe... Patience is needed. We, we don't need to throw the baby out of the bath water and we can see what can happen over the next 12 months. We don't need to rush. All right. All right. Don't rush. So it means this is a don't rush challenge. Well, I've got um, Richard, don't. another Manchester United fan calling in. It seems the Manchester United fans are the ones calling in uh, to express themselves. So, hi, Richard. Hi. Good morning. Morning. How's it going? I'm very fine. Are you? I'm very well. So let's talk about Manchester United. What do you have to say? I didn't get that. It's coming in. Let's talk about Manchester United, your club that you support. What do you have to say concerning the season so far? I can't hear you. Sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Better. So I said, let's talk about your club, Manchester United. What would you have to say concerning the season so far and expectations? All right, okay. Um, so far, they've been playing all this. <laughs> to be very frank with you. Yeah. 
Sorry? Yeah, go on, go on, go ahead. Yeah, so far they've been playing rubbish. I least expected what they are playing right now. Because they have so many things at stake. And then they are playing like they, they have really nothing to put about. Mm. You have two games. You have two games. Just get six points. And then you decided to play with those games. From the starting lineup uh, against Southampton, I knew something was wrong. Chelsea again. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Then um, the FA Cup game against Chelsea. That, it was a total, total mess. Mm. Yes. Wow. So from the, the probably the players or not, I don't know. But but they need to really put more effort into into getting towards staying top four. All right. Thank you very much, Richard, for speaking with us. And I just hope that Manchester United fans and um, Manchester United management will get to hear you and, of course, uh, do something about the performance of the club. Now, Manchester City fan, Damilola, uh, let, we're talking about goalkeepers now. How would you rate your goalkeeper, Ederson, this season? Uh, he, he had a few um, errors this season that led to goals more than last season, you know, he's, he was much reliable in two seasons that won't leave, but this season he's kind of let us down a little. But notwithstanding, he still has, um, he's still in the lead for the um, Golden Glove uh. in the EPL, you know, he has the, he's tied for most clinches with um, Nick Pope, only. Uh. But next season, we hope to bounce back, you know, this season has been a huge disappointment. Players out of form, like, my receiver also, so yeah, that's just one of those seasons where it drops, where it just has things that won't click for you. But next season, he'll be back. I'm very sure of this. Mm. All right. I'll, I'll still get to Chelsea because Chelsea's goalkeeper, Kepa, is a major talking point mm. here. But I'll, let, me, <laughs> let me go to Arsenal and talk to GD yeah. about um, Brad Leno and uh, Martinez. I mean, most of the Arsenal fans are now saying that Martinez should be the number one goalkeeper while Leno starts off the bench or plays cup matches. What's your take on this? Um, look, it's a very good problem to have. The question I'd like to throw to my pairs, you know, on, on this call is, which of you um, is supporting a club that has two goalkeepers that you can confidently say are of equal standard? You know, mm. um, I don't even know who the second goalkeeper in Manchester City is. Um, definitely not with um, they're Definitely not with um, Manchester United, you know, because Romero definitely is not in the class of people like Martinez. So... Mm. You know, um, <laughs> definitely, I can say that 100%. Um, yeah. Right now, I can confidently say we have one of the two, you know, um, two okay. top goalkeepers in the premiership. I know. quit. Yeah, all I right. can say that, you know, I can, <laughs> so, I can say that with all, all confidence. Romero has conceded two goals all season. How many matches is he played? There's an Arsenal fan. There's an Arsenal fan. How many matches is he played? International, sorry, my phone is ringing now. Okay. Let's not get it started. Let's have law and order here. <laughs> Let me do you some finish. Forgive me. Forgive me. Okay. I cannot so, believe that statement. That is the most one ridiculous now. statement. Uh, Coming I have, from a delusional, invincible Arsenal Let me ask you a question. I have a his. How have many his matches has he Lagos. played this season? Let's listen Romero. to, let's listen to uh, his. Um, let's hear what he has to say. He's an Arsenal fan, so I'm sure he might have a different opinion on this. Uh, hi, Ahiz. Hi, what's up? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing much. All right, as an Arsenal fan, I mean, it's been a lot of bashing for Arsenal, but let me have you say how the season has gone so far and your expectations from the club. Yes, we don't have the season starting for Arsenal. We don't have the season and we couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle it. Ooh, the line is breaking. Would you want to call us back, Ahiz, because the line isn't so clear? Right, thank you very much. I just hope we get your own view because he's an Arsenal fan. I'd like to get that different opinion before GD and Imando get to tear themselves apart. Uh, let me jump straight to Chelsea now because that's another talking point. Kepa, most of the Chelsea fans think he's the worst goalkeeper in the Premier League. But he has had a few good games. But now we're hearing rumours that Chelsea want to get Jan Oblak from Atletico Madrid to replace Kepa Arita Balaga. I mean, Ebiz, what do you have to say about this? Well, um, truth be told, um, Kepa has been terrible. Uh, he has really been terrible. But um, compare compare Kepa to other goalkeepers in the Premier in the Premier League. Um, he hasn't really, really, really lived up to his um, his worth with 
the amount they paid for him. Um, if you if you ask me, um, on a scale of one to ten, I'll place Kepa in like three, four, thereabout. And so that means he has been really, really poor. Mm -hmm. and, and then this, again, I, I realized that um, Ch uh, Lampard also saw this. And there's one good thing about Lampard. He wastes no time in addressing the flaws. Mm -hmm. He kept him out when he saw that he was not uh, playing well. The same thing he does with all of the players. If he sees you're uh, not doing so well, or we can take um, Gilmore, for example, he left him out, make them go back, and then realize that, yes, they have to, to, to stand up to the plate. The defense of Chelsea, uh, alongside with uh, Kepa, have been really, really terrible. The same thing goes for, um, um, what's this guy's name? Zuma and the other Zuma, guy. Zuma, yeah. Um, yeah. Whenever they play terribly bad, he, he takes them away. And then for them to go and I don't know what's wrong with them sometimes. But mm. what I see, what I see again, especially in the defense, like um, one of the guys also said, you need to be comfortable as a defender, comfortable yeah. with the ball at your feet. And that's what Chelsea don't have. Okay. They all panic when they get when the ball's on their feet. And that's why they lose so much balls and they, they just be anyhow. So with Kepa, yes, the move, the move is there. I've seen the rumors. Mm. He needs like I think there are two two goalkeepers he's probably looking out for, okay. and hopefully something good will come out of it. Mm. All right. Well, I know we're out of time, and I really would love to go on and on, but I'm sure we'll have this again after the last fixtures of the English Premier League. That will be tomorrow, probably next week Saturday. We'll have this again, then judge how the teams have performed and see the way forward. But I'd like to thank you guys, Dami, a Manchester City fan, a big uh, a Chelsea fan, and uh, GD, uh, an Arsenal fan, and Emmanuel, a Manchester United fan. <laughs> Bragging rights for Arsenal on beating run. Come on. But thank you, guys. You've made this show special. <laughs> Thank you for having thank us. You, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Doka. All right, well, that's the much you can take today on Plus Sports Special, the fans edition. We're looking forward to the last fixtures of the English Premier League. I am Udoka and Joko, wishing you the very best of the day, and please continue to stay safe. <laughs>